so so the bill is based off of a, a 2012 baseline. Um, and, and obviously it's 2021 right now. Uh, can, can the sponsor tell us where we are in emissions compared to a 2012 baseline today? I don't know the answer to that, but I'd be happy to provide it to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so, Mr. Chairman, I think that this is kind of indicative over what what this legislation is trying to accomplish. Meaning that that answer. So, um, I just heard the sponsor, I believe, say that 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 this was to reduce uh, to ninety nine percent below twenty twelve emissions. But I read in the bill, I think it says ninety percent. I might have misheard that. But but how in the world can we be talking about legislation that's based on a twenty twelve baseline that by twenty twenty five requires a reduction in emissions by 65% when we don't even know where we are today. I mean, it sounds like we don't even know what we're doing right now. Let me let me give you some other things that are especially concerning in the legislation. The legislation says that um, that, that the, the administrator of the EPA has to have regulations by December 31st of 2022. Uh, however, by January of 2024, 20, uh, uh, the states have to have uh, plans submitted to saying how they're going to comply with this. It allows the EPA administrator uh, apparently to disprove it, uh, to disapprove it, but it doesn't provide any mechanism or criteria by which these will be evaluated. Um, it says after 42 months um, that, um, that that some of the, the, the regulators regulations have to be promulgated by the administrator, but again, by January of 2024, states have to submit plans on how they're going to comply. In another section of the bill, it says that two years after the date of enactment, which we don't know when that is, uh, the Secretary of Interior should issue regulations, uh, which that will be before the administrator releases his or her uh, uh, plans and regulations and enforcement. So it seems like it's really disjointed because, number one, let me say it again, we don't even know where we are right now in regard to emissions, uh, yet we're talking about 65% and we're talking about 90% or maybe even 99% reductions uh, based on a 2012 baseline. It seems like we should be a little bit uh, more aware of, of where we are and what this would actually mean before we move forward. Another example of, of concerns is that under the legislation, it does not give any consideration to economic implications. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this bill uses Section 111D of the Clean Air Act. Uh, you may be familiar with that section because uh, that was the section that President Obama used to set the clean power uh, plan standards. Under that very same authority, President Obama said we're going to reduce emissions by 32 percent off a 2005 baseline by 2030. Mr. Chairman, you may be familiar that President Trump came in and said, no, we're not doing this. We're not going to pick technological winners and losers. We're not going to have government trying to choose winners and losers like they did in Solyndra case, which obviously the government's not good at. Do you know that even though we rescinded it under President Trump, Mr. Chairman, we hit the 2030 target. In fact, we exceeded the 2030 target of 32 percent reductions in 2019, 11 years early. Under President Trump, and we didn't hit 32 percent, we hit 33 percent. Mr. Chairman, why would we replicate the failures, the flaws of what happened previously instead of letting innovators innovate? We have demonstrated that the United States can, can lead the world in reducing emissions. I, I, and, I, and I want to be very clear on this, uh, my, my friend from Colorado. I actually expressed concern when President Trump withdrew the methane rule, not because I, 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 I didn't think that we should uh, be rescinding the rule, but I thought that what, what should have been done is that should have been paired with more clarity on the existing regulations that regulate methane. I understand like you do, methane has the highest global warming potential, though a shorter uh, uh, shelf life. Um, it, but but we need to be focusing on this. It's an important gas for us to be focusing on. But we also have to learn from history and evidence and what we've done. Lastly, Mr. Chairman, I remind you, there is a 40 percent increase in natural gas demand globally through 2050. The United States, according to the National Energy Technology Labs, has the, some of the lowest emissions profiles in the world. It's not like people around the world are going to stop using gas. What's going to happen is they're going to use dirtier gas dirty Putin gas. Mr. Chairman, according to the National Energy Technology Labs, uh, Russian gas has a, a 41 to 47 percent higher emissions profile than U.S. gas. This actually it works along with some of the other bills on the agenda today 
to prohibit or prevent the production of, of, of natural gas in the United States that we're currently exporting to 30 state, 36 countries around the world and to replace it or supplant it with Russian gas, resulting in greater global emissions, job losses in the United States. I would commit to work with the gentleman from, Calif from Colorado on this legislation, but, but I'm really concerned that this is moving forward in an uninformed way that really doesn't result in the, in the type of emissions reduction that I think we're looking forward to.